Calibrating a camera lens in Lightburn can be pretty tricky, so in this video we're going to walk you through it and highlight some common issues. You'll need a camera and a way to hold it still. I'll be using the Lightburn camera and mount, but any USB camera should work. You'll also need to download and print the calibration pattern, which you can find in the Lightburn documentation, or there's a link to that in Lightburn itself from the lens calibration screen. After printing the pattern card, glue it to something very flat, like plywood, MDF, or foam board. Any curvature of the printed pattern will be interpreted by the software as distortion from your lens, so it's important that the pattern card be as flat as possible. The size of the pattern is not terribly important. It is only important that it is the right size in the camera view, and you can change that easily by moving the card closer or farther from the camera. Make sure that the pattern you print looks exactly the same as this one. Uh, the number and the arrangement of the dots is important, so if part of the image is cut off, it won't work. I'm going to put the camera in the mount to hold it steady. First, remove the faceplate by pressing upward on the legs from underneath. The legs have small bumps at the bottoms to hold the faceplate in place, and once you're clear of those, it should come off easily. Place the camera in the mount with the white cable connector at the open end. Slide the faceplate partly back on, and then line up the tab on the faceplate with the slot in the mount, like this, and snap it all back together. Plug the cable into the camera and make sure that it's all firmly connected. The next step is to run Lightburn. We're going to open the camera control window, uh, which I don't currently have. So go up to Window and make sure Camera Control here has a checkbox next to it by clicking it. Once you do that, you should see the camera window appear. Uh, then choose your camera from the drop-down list. Make sure that your camera shows up. Once you've selected the camera, you should get a live video feed from it. So I can see that this is working. Once you've verified that the camera is actually functioning, go to Tools, Calibrate Camera Lens, and choose the camera again. Now with the camera chosen, you have a couple of options. If you purchased a camera directly from Lightburn, you can click here to use one of our existing presets. Um, you can also change between fisheye and standard. All of the cameras that Lightburn sells are fisheye lenses. You can tell uh, by looking at the camera to see if there's distortion. So if you notice here, this is sort of the edge of my desk and it's curved in the camera view. So anything that is a straight line in the real world that looks curved in the camera view uh, tells you that you have a fisheye lens. If straight lines in the real world were also straight lines in the camera view, then you'd use standard lens. This just affects how the calibration happens, so try to choose the correct one. When you are ready, click Next. And you're presented with this screen. Now, this up here is a small thumbnail to show you what Lightburn is expecting from this next capture image. What we're going to do is we're going to capture this calibration card in a couple of different positions. And this little thumbnail up top is going to show us which positions it's trying to capture or it's wanting us to capture them in. Hold the camera or the pattern card close to the camera um, in the correct orientation and make it so that it's approximately the same size in this view as you see in this view up here and click capture. Now you want to hold the card very nice and still and you'll see right now that I've got pattern found score 8888 try again. So that's basically telling me that it failed uh, for some reason. So we're going to try again. That one was a little better. Um, try again. So I've intentionally chosen the 150 degree camera because it is probably going to be the hardest one to calibrate. And you'll notice that this image looks really strange right now. That's completely fine. The only thing that you should really care about is this score. Uh, and what we're shooting for is any number under 0.3. Uh, if you can get down to 0.2 or even less, like 0.15, that's great. But 0.3 or less than 0.3, is a good score, and if you get one like that, you can move on. Now, where you hold this pattern card and how you hold it relative to the camera is actually quite important. So I'm gonna try this again, move the pattern card a little bit closer, um, 
and hold it as straight onward or as straight toward the camera as I can. Hold it nice and still. Click capture. So now that one was terrible. Try it again. Just move it a tiny little bit. Capture. And very, very small moves can make very large changes in the score numbers that you get. So just try a couple of different things. Move backwards, move forwards. So there, I've moved backwards a little bit and I've got a better score. So I'm going to move back just a touch more. I've got a better score still, so I'll move back just a little bit more. Oh, angle it a little bit toward the camera because I'm not holding it quite straight. A little better. Now, I've done this quite a bit, so I'm actually not surprised that these numbers are jumping all over the place and behaving a little strangely. That one's actually not bad. Let's try this again. Probably not holding it at just the right angle because it is really, really fussy. Two point three. Oh, that's a little better. It is really important to hold this as still as you can. Sometimes that causes problems because I shake a little bit or there we go so you can tell in this one that the capture looks really weird but that's okay I got a great score and you can see that the pattern itself within that image looks nice and rectangular and that's the most important part so I'm going to click next and now it's telling me here I want to capture along the bottom edge or close to the bottom edge of the camera. So I'm going to hold it down there, click capture, got a good score, first try, that's nice. So I'll click next. Now we're going to do one uh, over on this side. And for this one, you have to aim the card toward the camera. For the ones on the sides, when you're doing fisheye lenses, you have to aim the pattern card toward the camera to get the capture to work properly. So I'm going to do that. Again, holding it nice and still. 0.43, let's try another one. 0.24, that's very good. So I'm going to click next. And now from this point forward, the captured images should actually look decent or fairly normal. Um, so if I do a capture from this one, not found, let's try turning it a little bit. I've got this pattern card turned slightly away from my light source. I might actually need to move my light a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to try that. So I'm going to slide my light over, point it down a little bit so that the camera pattern catches a little bit more light because lighting is important. And that was all the difference. So that's a good example of the kinds of things that can make this process difficult. Um, just me moving my light source made a very big difference. Um, again, changing the angle that the uh, pattern is held at makes a big difference. Four, six. Uh, and you'll notice that I've got not, not a lot of border around that pattern here, so I'm just moving it in a little bit. That helps, usually helps. There we go, so I've got a 0.33. And just very, very subtle changes to the angle that I'm holding the card at. So if I tilt the card backward, for example, so now it's leaned back. That number, oh, that actually got better. I'm gonna move the card back, try that. 0.33.
0.39, tilt it forward a little bit, 0.29, there we go. So the trick was just tilting it forward slightly so that it, it was angled more toward the camera. So I'm going to click next, and now we'll have one up top here. So I'm angling it downward. This one might be tricky with lighting. Four two, that's pretty good. You also don't have to be right up at the edge like this. You can be down a little bit. Three two, that's really close. Try to sit my arm on something so that it's nice and steady. Found. Try this again. Point two four, there we go. So because I was able to get a capture score of 0.3 or less in all of these captures, uh, I now have the option to skip. So normally uh, you can do captures in the corners as well to help the calibration. Um, if your capture scores are good enough, you don't have to do those. You can click skip to go through these. The corner captures with a fisheye lens, especially with an extreme fisheye like the 150, are harder. So I'm going to try one and see if I can get it. Pattern not found, we'll move in a little bit. Great job, okay, so this one is good. You'll notice that it's nice and rectangular. So click next. There we go, great. Now I can skip, so I'm going to do so. And that's it, you're finished. The next part of the process is running the camera alignment wizard, and for that you have to mount the camera in the laser itself, and we'll cover that in another video.